and welcome to mini episode 237 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have two spooky stories for you today. And the last story comes from November the 20th, 2022. And story number one comes from Meg. I was the one who had a little girl ghost who tugged my shirt while I was cleaning the preschool. I wanted to start by saying that I've listened to more and more of the podcast and I believe more and more. But the one thing I will always believe to be true 100% of the time is your loved ones coming back to tell you that they're okay. 2022 has been the worst for me of the past two years. I was having a hard time on a February night. I was coming home from a D&D session and I looked up from getting my keys out of my pocket and I noticed a ladybird right by the handle. The tears came to me and I felt peace and like someone had hugged me. What is so important about a ladybug, you ask? Ladybugs were my late aunt's favourite thing. I love her and miss her dearly. I had nothing growing in my yard at that time that would warrant a ladybug to be around, and it was nowhere near my porch light, if it was simply a bug looking for warmth. I am now convinced that she comes to see us more than once because my daughter, who is now three, saw a picture of me and my aunt and she just hugged the picture and decided that this picture needed to be in her room. She said, I love her and I love you, mommy. My daughter was born six months after my aunt had passed. In September, we were picking apples in a small town outside of where I live in Arizona. I was looking over the pumpkin patch and I was thinking about how much I missed my aunt and how I wished she was here. Then I looked down and I saw a ladybug. I smiled and said hello to her. I'm so glad she's still around. In 2021, I was falling asleep. I heard a woman scream as I was falling asleep. She sounded like she was right outside my window. Now, since I was falling asleep, I had assumed it was exploding head syndrome until my husband said, Did you hear that screaming? It was so loud, I heard it through my headset. Did it wake the baby? I didn't answer for what felt like 10 minutes. My husband chalked it up to the neighbours because our next door neighbour and his girlfriend at the time were having issues, but we could usually hear them when they fought. There was no one fighting and there was no one when I looked outside. I cleansed the house just in case. In recent years I've been trying to reconnect with my roots. My roots are from Ireland, Scotland, Italy and Denmark, mostly Ireland from both sides. I've been doing this with my witchcraft and studies. In early November of this year, I woke to three loud knocks on my bedroom window. I was startled awake. Now, in my barely awake state, I assumed it was my daughter needing help since she's barely potty trained and we keep her door shut at night because the cats bug her awake. So I shouted, I'm coming, sweet girl. And I got out of bed and went into her room. I swore I heard another set of three loud knocks, but she was dead asleep. I was so confused. I went back to bed and looked out the window and no one was there. My husband was dead asleep as well. He only woke up because I was getting up and down. He said he didn't hear a thing, but how could he not? The knocking was so loud it nearly scared my very soul out of my body. Two or three days later, my husband got a call from his mom. I heard him gasp and get sad. I was entertaining our daughter and I figured he would tell me and I wondered, I hope no one died. When he hung up with his mom, he told me that his grandmother's husband had died later the day that I heard those knocks. I finally knew what those people in the books felt like. You know, their blood ran cold. My hands shook and I felt a tear go down my cheek and all I asked was, was he Irish? I hugged myself. My husband admitted he didn't know but asked me why. I heard those three knocks, remember? I told him. I think it was the banshee. My husband is not a believer, but he is respectful and he said, Oh yeah, I didn't hear those knocks. Of course, you're not Irish. I explained to him that the banshee only comes to Irish families. I was honoured but also confused. I am not a first, second or third generation. I'm like sixth generation and I don't think I'm from one of the important Irish family lines. And also we are not close with his grandmother's husband. I did thank her and apologised for being rude to her. Welcome back to the podcast, Meg. I love it when people come back again and they tell more stories. Firstly, I'm pretty sure that I interchanged between Ladybug and Ladybird there. Uh, So for for American listeners, we don't call Ladybugs Ladybugs. We call them Ladybirds. 
I don't know what they're called in other places, but I know in the UK and Ireland we call them ladybirds. And I had never considered ladybirds as like a um a sign from people. You know the way people have lots of different things that they consider signs like feathers, rainbows, robins, whatever it is. Um and ladybirds just weren't something I considered, but we've had multiple stories over the years from people who have seen ladybirds after someone that they love had passed away. And I think they're a beautiful sign. I love a ladybird. What a lovely sign to get from somebody. And I'm glad that your aunt is making her, making herself known to you in the form of ladybirds. What a lovely way. And also, it is a lot less creepy than a lot of the other stuff that we hear, you know. In regards to the woman screaming, you know, on first listen, at the beginning, it sounds like exploding head syndrome. And then your husband going, did you just hear that? Through the headphones. What was going on there? I know that you checked outside and, and all that jazz and there was nobody there. But I sort of, that's that's one of those times where I'd be sort of wishing that it was paranormal and not a real woman screaming. Because I'd be thinking, oh no, oh no, what's happening and what am I going to have to get involved in? Just be paranormal. Just just be a, a scary ghost woman. That's that's much easier to deal with. In regards to your three knocks, um, they say that the banshee is obviously attached to particular Irish families. Um, some some people say it's families who have the the prefix O or Mac in their name. Um, so O'Neill, O'Brien, O'Grady, O'Connor. Also Kavanagh is a strong banshee name. So if you're from one of those O or Mac family names, then apparently you're more likely to have a banshee. But if I were you, I wouldn't be feeling honoured <laughs> to have her in my life. I'd be like, no, no, thank you. I don't. I I don't want you to come and herald people's deaths for me because those people are going to die either way. And uh, I don't need the added trauma of knocks or screaming in order to tell me that this is going to happen. Although if it is her, you don't really have much choice. So today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now, look, I know I've been doing fun, silly ads for HelloFresh at the moment, but I thought I needed to do at least one ad where you could really get an idea of what HelloFresh is all about. Did you know that March is National Nutrition Month and HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious dietitian approved meals? Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu choices for meals with under 700 calories and with one third less sodium. And those aren't the only options. So you can choose quick cook. You can choose that your box is family friendly, carb smart, protein rich, vegetarian, pork free. There are so many different options to choose from. HelloFresh sends you seasonal recipes that come with ingredients already pre-proportioned. So all you have to do is cook and enjoy. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not a good cook. It's not something that comes naturally to me, but let me tell you when I'm getting HelloFresh, I I feel like I feel like I'm Gordon Ramsay, you know? I'm taking pictures of every meal and I'm sending it into the group chat. To be honest, HelloFresh is one of those things that I'm always going to recommend, whether I'm advertising for them or not. It's quick, it's easy, it's great for people who maybe aren't very good cooks like me. It's cost effective and it also saves on a ton of waste. So go to HelloFresh.com forward slash real life ghost stories sixty. And use the code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Life Ghost Stories 60 and use the code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Today's episode is sponsored by HERS. This time of year, all of the emphasis is always on organizing your space, it's always on wellness, it's on spring cleaning, it's on fresh starts. But actually, the most important way to take care of yourself is to take care of your mental health and you can do so at forhers.com. At forhers.com you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medication if it is right for you. The process is 100% online including unlimited check-ins, provider messaging and support along the way. Plus, to make things even simpler, you can get your first month of treatment for just $25 if prescribed. To get started, go to forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers.com slash spring. And I know for some people that getting access to proper mental health care can be 
a serious source of stress in and of itself. It also can be really difficult to talk to healthcare providers face to face about things like your sexual health, about things like hair loss and about things like your mental health. That is why HERS makes it simple. Get started today at forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers, F-O-R-H-E-R-S dot com slash S-P-R-I-N-G. The offer is only available if prescribed. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. The subscription is required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. And story number two comes from Tommy. I've believed in the paranormal my entire life. My father passed away from a work accident when I was only six months old and me and my mom have always believed he was with us at certain times. Right after his passing, my mom asked one of her old friends to stay at the apartment on the sofa because she didn't want to sleep there alone. My dad never liked this friend growing up and wanted my mom to stay away from him as he was always getting into trouble. My parents moved into the apartment fairly recently and for the past two or three months they had a metal bed frame leaning against the wall in the living room. They didn't know where to put it so they leaned it against the wall enough to make sure that it wouldn't fall over just until they could find a place for it. When my mom's friend was staying over that bed frame somehow fell and hit the friend right in the face and broke his nose. My mom has always believed that my dad was there and pushed the bed frame over because he was mad that that friend was sleeping there. Years later, probably when I was six or seven, I was staying at my grandparents' house. I usually stayed there on the weekends. My grandpa would also go to bed later than me and my grandma, so we had a nightly routine where he would come into my room and sit on my bed to say goodnight to me. I was laying in bed one night and I couldn't fall asleep. I tossed and turned and eventually I felt someone sit down on the side of my bed and put their hand on my leg. So I knew my grandpa was in there to say goodnight to me. But when I opened my eyes there was no one there and my bedroom door was closed. Surprisingly I didn't feel scared, just really confused. So I just closed my eyes again and fell asleep. Thinking back on it now I'm almost positive that it was my father letting me know he was with me. The main story happened between 8th grade and freshman year. I used to be really close with one of my cousins and we would hang out all the time. When I was in middle school, my aunt married and moved in with a guy named Jimmy. Jimmy lived in his grandmother's old house that he inherited when she died. He didn't talk about her much, so all I ever knew was that she hated kids and that she had died in the house. At first, when I would go over there, Small, unnoticeable things would happen, like noises and things moving around that could easily be excused as the house settling or the wind. One day my cousins and one of their friends went down to the basement to do laundry. They never went down there alone because it was way too creepy. My cousin's friend had a video phone. This was the mid-2000s, so they weren't very common, and he was taking videos of the creepy basement. There was a small wooden rocking chair in one corner of the laundry area and when he was watching the videos back, as he filmed the chair, a deathly white hand could be seen shooting out from behind the chair, almost like it was trying to grab him. He refused to come back over after that and moved across country the next year so we lost contact with him. After that, it started to get worse. We would hear voices and footsteps in the house when we were the only ones there. My cousin got pushed out of his bed once. It got so bad that my cousin burst into tears one time while I was there. He refused to talk about what was wrong, but eventually said that he had seen a reflection in an adjacent window of a creepy old lady smiling at him. When I was in 8th grade, my aunt was going through some personal issues and my cousin had to move in with me and my mom for a bit. I had a pretty big room with a walk-in closet and I would always leave my closet door open because I used it as an extension to my room. So there was plenty of room for me and my cousin. The very first night he stayed, I had this terrible feeling while I was trying to sleep that someone was watching me. My closet door was open as always, but I noticed it seemed a lot darker inside than it ever had been before, like pitch black. I got up and closed the door and instantly felt better. 
I heard my cousin say, Thank you. So I knew he had felt it too. He didn't stay with us long, but there was a couple of things that happened, and I now believe whatever was in that house followed him to mine. Devon was a troubled kid and had a rough upbringing, so it doesn't surprise me that something latched on to that negative energy. One day after school, I got home and my mom was visibly shaken. I asked what was wrong and she wouldn't tell me. I can't remember what excuse she gave at the time, but I remember her telling me after Devon left that that day she looked shaken. She was cleaning and doing stuff around the house when she heard all of the doors upstairs slamming repeatedly. She thought it was me and Devon messing around, and seeing as how we were supposed to be at school, she ran upstairs ready to give us the scolding of a lifetime. But when she got up there, no one was home. The last occurrence happened shortly before my cousin moved out and is, to this day, one of the most terrifying things I have ever experienced. As I mentioned, me and my cousin shared my room, and we went to the same school. So we used my alarm clock in the morning and got up at the same time. It was an older digital clock, one of those really loud, obnoxious ones. I set the alarm for 6am and it had been set to that for three years because I used the same alarm clock through school and always got up at the same time. One morning the alarm clock went off. In typical teenager fashion, I laid in bed for a minute with my eyes closed while my alarm went off because I didn't want to get up. All of a sudden, I heard the nastiest voice, like the edited demonic voice that you hear in movies, scream, Get up! Right in my ear. I jumped out of bed, thinking it was my cousin messing with me, but he was still fast asleep. Figuring it was a dream, I walked over to turn the alarm off, but that's when I noticed that the clock said it was only 5am, and my alarm was set for 6 There's a button on the clock that you can press to see what time the alarm is set for, so I pressed the button and it showed that the alarm was still set for 6am. I rubbed my eyes and pinched myself and did everything I could to make sure I was wide awake, because the only thing I could think of at that point was, maybe I'm just tired and reading the clock wrong. But nope. The alarm that had never been wrong before somehow went off an hour early. I turned the clock off and back on and went back to bed. I woke up an hour later and went about my regular routine. I asked my cousin if he woke up when the clock went off at five and he said he had no idea what I was talking about. I never told him what happened because I didn't want to freak him out. That voice is embedded into my mind and I don't think I'll ever be able to forget it. And as far as I know, my cousin hasn't experienced anything else since then. I would like to think that if I died and I was haunting people that I would also be violently haunting people, you know? If the need arose, that I would not stop short of flinging an iron bedpost at somebody. I would do it. I'd, I'd, I'd do it in life if, if I had to. I'd probably, I'd like to think that I would do it in death too. It is lovely to think, as I always say, that your loved ones are able to come back and look after you and make you feel happy and safe and calm and make you feel like you're always being watched over. And those stories, they do fill me full of absolute joy. They really do. They make me feel like life is okay. And even when we lose the people that we love, things can still be okay. And that's very important. What is also important, however, is to discuss the horror of whatever was going on in this particular house, in your cousin's house. Because that that is... um ooh, That is a lot. Firstly, that white hand reaching out from behind the rocking chair to grab your cousin's friend is very reminiscent of that one episode of Ghost Adventures that I always talk about that did genuinely freak me out at the time. I don't know where they are. Maybe Waverly Hills? Maybe somewhere like that? And when they're in a tunnel and a hand reaches out to grab um, Zach Bagans and it's a shadowy hand. And that honestly scared the bejesus out of me at the time. And it's one of the, I think it's one of their best moments in Ghost Adventures ever. And this sounds very similar to that in a terrifying way. And I don't blame your cousin's friend for refusing to come over after that. I would like, absolutely not. I'm not going into that house again to be grabbed by a ghost hand. No, thank you. And I wonder if you're right, you know, about the negative energy. Obviously this, your cousin Devon was going through a lot of stuff, a lot of negative stuff. 
and was surrounded by negative energy anyway because of circumstances in their life. So maybe maybe that attracts things. Maybe that makes things happen. Maybe that makes things more prevalent, more obvious in day to day life. And I also just want to apologise for the um, scary, scary voice that I did. I think it might be the scariest one I've ever done and I actually scared myself. So I apologise, Tommy, if that brought up some stuff for you. And I apologise to everyone listening because I honestly scared myself. Didn't think it was going to be that scary. But uh, yep, it was that scary. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Meg and Tommy for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from November the 20th, 2022. And if you would like to send in your story, you could do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for extra content, you can sign up to Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad-free. And on that note, I shall see you next time. 